we will simply see that if we are given an integer array nums and integer k, we have to return the number of non-empty sub arrays that have a sum divisible by k. So, one very brute force thing which you can come to your mind is R and I will generate all the possible sub arrays and then find the sum of that sub array and then check if it is divisible by k. Generating all the sub arrays takes O of n square time. Finding the sum will take O of n time. Checking it is divisible by k or not, it will take O of 1 time. So it will be total O of n cube. But for sure, we have already seen numerous times that in these kind of brute force approaches, while generating the sub array, I can generate the sum also. So I don't need to specifically find the sum, thus making it O of n square. Now, can I improvise it? For sure, yes. Because what I am doing? I am going to a sub array, I am finding its sum, which means I am finding my sub array sum, range sum I am finding. If I am finding my range sum, I know there is no update operation in the range sum. So I can easily use my prefix sum technique. If I can use my prefix sum technique, I know we have done the previous existingly problem, exact same problem. Thus, we can use the same funda. Now, Recapping what we did to find the range sum is that okay, we will maintain the prefix sum. Let's say it is a beginning, it is a point, it is another point. Range sum for this is let's say R. Prefix sum at this point will be PA, prefix sum will be PB at the point B, the point A. Now, I know that the range sum R will be PB minus PA. This we have already seen here also. I'm just recapping it. Now, I have to do one thing. The range sum should be divisible by K, which means R mod K. I will do R mod K and that R mod K should be 0. That shows that R range sum is divisible by K. Thus making me that okay, PB mod K is, should be equal to PA mod K. So I should ideally take modulus. I should ideally take modulus at every step and then for sure uh, prefix sums modulus I will take. And if it is same, I can easily say that my range sum will be divisible by K. Okay, let's see and let's replicate and let's replicate the same exact same code, exact same method. So we have nums. We have 4, 5, 0, minus 2, minus 3, minus 1. And then we have prefix sum. Okay, 0, prefix sum will be 4, 4 plus 5, 9, 9 plus 0, 9, 9 plus minus 2, 7, uh, minus 3, 4, 4 plus 1, 5. Okay, then simply take the modulus, modulus with k, k is 5. So 0, 4, 4, 4, 2, 4 and 0. Now I can easily see that I can easily see one thing. Let's say if I just remove this entire stuff, I can easily see that for this specific four, I have found one more four. And that's what I required for a prefix sum. If it is same with the existing prefix sum mod key value. Okay, that's a range which will have modulus, which will be divisible by my k. I can easily see four. I found a four. This, okay, four is for this and this is for this. So I have this specific range as you can see. 4 is for here, 4 is for here, I can find this specific range which is divisible by k. Same way, I know my zeros here, so this is the range which is again divisible by k. This is again a range which is again divisible by k. So for this specific 4, I went on to previous 4. One 4 is this, making the range like this. Another 4 is this, making the range like this. Okay, let's go on to next numbers. 2, no, I have no 2 previously. Four. Yeah, I have four, which is this four, this four, and this four. So I will have three sub arrays. How? One sub array is this one, right? Now again, minus three, minus five is sorry, minus three, minus two is minus five. Minus five mod five is zero. Okay, this is one sub array. Another he is saying, okay, ending at here, which means another sub array is this. Okay, ending at here, another sub array is. Okay, we have got three sub arrays here. Now, last but not least, we have a zero, which means zero in the very beginning. Also, we always keep. Thus, uh, we know that the entire sum will be divisible by four. So, you realize, I think it's pretty easy, right? It is same way saying, I'll maintain my prefix of mod k. Then I will just simply uh, do and find. Okay, if I have four, how many four I had previously? Okay, I had only one four. Contribution and answer so far is one. When I am at this 4, how many 4s I had previously? Okay, I have 2 4. Contribution in the answer is 4. Sorry, 2. If I am at this 2, how many 2s I had previously? No. So, contribution in the answer is 0. If I am at this 4, how many 4s I had previously? 3. So, contribution in the answer is 3. If I am at this 0, how many 0s are there previously? 
okay it's one so condition answer is one so answer is seven for me and that is you will see answer is seven and for sure the same way in this case answer is zero that brings us that you what you will do is you will start coding because you are very confident you have seen this problem earlier it is exactly same and you will start coding and that's where you will get in trouble why because you did not realize one thing here everything was so good good your prefix sum your prefix sum if you remembered was always positive your prefix sum mod k is always also positive but your numbers can be negative and that is the point where the interviewer will ask you and your interview will go in just finding out cases if you don't know this problem already so let's see your nums is this prefix sum is 0 minus 1 again 0 plus minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 is 1 1 plus 9 is 10 okay now if you do a prefix sum mod k you will get a 0 minus 1 mod 2 is minus 1 1 mod 2 is 1 10 mod 2 is 0 now you will again go and find the same thing okay for a 0 go and find 0 okay 0 is the beginning okay for minus 1 go and find minus 1 i don't have it for a 1 go and find a 1 i don't have it for a 0 go and find a 0 yeah i have it so technically you will give me an answer give me as an answer this range only which says 9 minus 1 8 plus 2 10 this is divisible by 2 so that is one range which is given that's an answer but you missed one range you missed that this specific range where one could have been paired with minus one then i could have got okay two is actually also divisible by two thus if you go by the above approach only thus you will get wrong answer in the negative case and, the, and why this came in because i would have again zero was paired with this zero and made okay and and told me that okay this is a range but in this case one could not have been paired with minus one now for few of you you must have a instinct okay Aryan, what i will do is i will convert this minus one to plus one the 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 issue is that in the in the comparison right the issue is in the, in the comparison if this would have been a plus one if i take a module if this would have been plus one so i would have got the answer so what you could have done is okay you realize the issue is with negative modulo but what you did was okay you told rn just to compare what i will do i will convert it to positive ideally i will just compare the remainder okay i'll compare the i'll make it to positive and that's another issue because the moment you realize with another example that you are wrong how okay you maintain the prefix sum in the very beginning zero plus two two plus minus two zero uh, plus two two minus four minus two now when you got the prefix sum mod k you will just simply say zero two zero zero sorry two like two mod six minus two mod six is minus two now again let's repeat the same process okay zero okay like it's 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 the beginning one two i have no two previously okay zero yeah i have a zero previously which is this one so this is a range which is divisible by six true okay two uh yeah i have a two previously which means this is a range which is again divisible by two okay sorry six now minus two you did one thing in the previous operation like you said okay Aryan, for this uh, negative ones i will take them modulo and i will consume it as a positive because i realized it is solving my answer it is a hunch for me okay it's solving my answer but then if you make it a positive what you will realize okay you made it a positive now two can pair it with this two which means you are saying that this minus four minus four is not divisible by six so how how did you even tell this will work no thus we realize changing the remainder to positive will not work as an answer so where you went wrong where did you go wrong so you went wrong when you told okay although it is negative i know the remainders if i want to compare the remainders here everything was working fine because all the remainders are positive you also thought of to come to make the remainders as positive but you to make the remainders as positive you applied a very wrong operation making the remainders positive by themselves this is not how the remainders for negative numbers work for ne again for a positive number two the remainder would have been two anyways but for a negative number two the remainder would be minus two but its positive counterpart which means if i want to ask the minus two's remainder in a positive way will be a four how minus two 
minus 2 plus 6, this 6, from which you are actually dividing, minus 2 plus 6, mod 6, 4 mod 6, 4. So, for minus 2, the remainder is both minus 2 and 4. Thus, the positive counterpart of minus 1 is minus 1 plus 2 mod 2. The positive counterpart of this minus 2 was minus 2 plus 6 mod 6. And that is the thing which you should have done to convert your negative counterpart to a positive counterpart. And you realize because you want to compare all the numbers and all the numbers are in positive and if they are in positive it works perfectly fine but when the remainder becomes negative that's an issue that's the reason you converted your negative to a positive counterpart and that's your answer cool so we realize we should simply convert our negative to a positive so we'll always maintain the positive remainder that's what we will do so let's recap with the above what we will do okay the prefix sum we'll just maintain the prefix of mod k okay you will see um it's the array is minus one two nine so i simply maintain okay zero in the very beginning then zero with minus one zero with minus one will become a minus one but then i realized minus one mod two is minus one so i should add a i should do a minus one plus two mod two this will give me the positive remainder okay and just adding it okay one then one plus two three and then the remainder will be 1. 3 plus 9, 12. And the remainder will be 0. Thus, you got your prefix sum modulo k as this array, which is all positive. And now you're good to go. You will say, okay, uh, for the 1, I have no 1 previously. Okay. For this 1, yeah, I have a 1 previously. Thus, representing that this is an array, which means that this as an array is divisible by 2. Okay. Then for a 0, you have a 0 previously, which means this entire array, which means that this entire array is, is divisible by 2. And thus you got two as an answer, which is correct answer. Okay, let's check, recheck with this with this example also. Same array nums two minus two two minus four. We just build our prefix of mod k. So in the very beginning, I have a zero zero plus two two mod six again two two minus two two minus two. But I I I told you that minus two is minus two mod six plus six. I should add like this is actually four being added and I should add it in existing two existing two so two plus four mod six is my new remainder so minus two plus six is the positive remainder of minus two and then I should add in the previous just to maintain the perfect sum approach so two plus four mod six will give me a zero okay then uh, zero plus two mod six will be two only two minus four mod six but I know convert minus to a positive counterpart so minus four plus six will give me a two so the positive counterpart remainder will be my two then two plus two mod six will be four thus my prefix of mod k has now become a two sorry zero two zero two and four for a zero I got one zero previously which represents that I have this as an array which is having some divisible by k and then i can say for this two i have this two which means this as an array which has a sum divisible by k and then for four i have a no four previously design good to go and that is was the main part why this problem is tricky because you will realize your mistake after going through the negative numbers but if you know that you can be like if you would have known this fact so you could have jumped on to the approach much faster but this comes very late because it is not that standard to just realize okay oh we are missing this thing the missing this thing will get you a wrong answer which makes this problem harder than this existing perfection problem although it is exactly same everything exactly same but it's a, it's a bit tricky cool let's see the code it's pretty simple uh same as what we did previously in this also in this problem also if you are again confused on all this part go and watch this video cool now uh we just have to do one thing we have to maintain one thing more which is the count of existing existing remainders if you remember for a four i need to know how many fours have been there previously so i need to maintain the previous prefix sum count that how many such how many such prefix sum have been there so firstly i will maintain a prefix sum array sorry a prefix sum variable because it's more than enough for me then uh, i will maintain a previous occurrence count previous 
occurrence of the perfect sum and the count for that and answer is zero now firstly for a zero in the very beginning i have one occurrence because by, by, by default i keep a zero right that's the reason i'll go on to all the numbers i'll get my new prefix sum which is existing prefix sum plus the remainder but remainder in positive direction that's the reason rather than only taking nums of i mod k i took nums of i mod k plus k making it positive no matter if the if the nums of i would have been 2 so 2 mod 6 plus 6 this would have given me a 8 now 8 mod 6 is again a 2 or if i would have a minus 2 minus 2 mod 6 plus 6 it would have given me 4 4 mod 6 is 4 so even if i have a positive number then also this will work because i am ultimately doing a mod k only and if i have a negative number then also i am safe so i will do a nums of i mod k plus k to get my positive remainder and then ultimately do a mod k to, to like to get the final remainder for the perfect sum now when this portion is done i will add the occurrences of this specific perfect sum in my answer how many such perfect sum i have obtained previously and when this is done, I will update because I have currently got that specific one prefix sum. So I should update its frequency and ultimately I get my answer. Thus, you will see the time used is O of n because you are going on to all the elements and space because of using your map hash map space is actually O of k or you can say O of n also. But it will be more or less like that you have to go and try for this specific k. k kind of will make sure that your prefix sum is under k. Your prefix sum value or number of values can be under k at max because if something if i do okay something modulo 5 so the modulo value can be at max 0 1 2 3 and 4 that's the reason my number of values can be at max k so you can also keep it as o of k so if you go up if you go up and check the constraints your k is 1 e4 and your nums is actually 3 into 1 e4 so k is already less so you can say your bound a higher bound is o of k itself and that is your answer. Cool. I hope you guys got it. And again, don't forget, July, June, July, end. We need to have 45K. It's your responsibility to get it done. Cool. Bye-bye. Take care.